In the first video in this sequence you will have seen how a designer has arrived at the dimensions, key dimensions and shapes for a simple construction toy based on cubes and struts. The next part will show you how to model the cube. So let's close that down and have a look at what Creo Elements Pro looks like when it first starts up. So you have the usual Windows menus along the top and some new items that you will learn about shortly. On the left hand side we have a navigator panel, in the centre a Windows browser. And the Windows browser defaults to the resources centre for Creo Elements Pro. Most important at the moment is the quick reference card which looks like this. And it has a whole series of um, snapshots to show the dashboards, selections, icons, menus, toolbars and so on. It's worth having this printed off and available as you learn Creo Elements Pro. The model that we're going to uh, start off with is the cube and to do that we want to look at the use the navigator panel on the left to select my documents so that the browser now shows what's in my documents. I've already created a folder here and you do that by right click and new folder I've called mine construction toy. Once you've created that you right click on the construction toy folder and set as the working directory. A final check of working directory on the left shows that the folder is currently empty. So let's start a new part. So I'm starting a new part by default and I'm going to call it cube corner. Notice no spaces, you're not allowed to have spaces in Cray Elements Pro file names. So I've used an underscore instead. We're using the default template. Click on OK and you'll then see the modeling window of Creo Elements Pro. On the right hand side you can see a features toolbar. The toolbars on the right are where you create new geometry and in this case we're going to start off by creating an extrusion. As soon as I've clicked on the extrusion tool you'll see that the extrusion toolbar is open along the top of the screen. This is sometimes called a dashboard. At the top of the dashboard is the prompt area where the green arrow is. Make sure you keep an eye on that because that's telling us what Creo Elements Pro is expecting you to do next or you may see reports there of what Creo Elements Pro is doing if it seems busy. You'll notice that the placement tab is in red giving us a clue as to the next thing we have to do which is define a sketch for the shape we're going to extrude. So I click on, it doesn't matter which date and plane, I'm going to use the top date and plane and the dialog box becomes filled in automatically and we're going to go straight to sketch. The sketch plane will now move until it's perpendicular to the screen. To help us with the uh, geometry we're going to draw a square. I'm going to use some center lines and in the flyout toolbar for lines the third button is the center line toolbar and if I click snap to the vertical reference line, click once there click again somewhere else on the vertical and I've created a, a vertical construct uh, center line. I now want another center line horizontal like so and now I can draw my rectangle. What this means is as I draw my rectangle you'll notice it's snapping automatically to be symmetrical about that horizontal and if I continue past the vertical center line you can see I'm getting symmetry across the vertical as well. If I click and then go to the arrow tool to see what we've drawn you'll notice there are two weak dimensions showing the, the dimensions of the square of the rectangle. If we want this to be a square an easy way of doing that is to put a constraint on that makes two of the sides equal in length and I do that using the arrow tool select one line hold control down on the keyboard and select the adjacent line. Once they're selected and highlighted in red right mouse button opens a floating menu where we can choose equal constraint and they become equal. And notice we've now only got one dimension here. The cube needs to be 30 millimeters across. To change the dimension we just double click, type in a new number, press enter on the keyboard and the cube is now constrained to be that size. If I zoom in you'll see what we've, what we've got here. 
Okay, so we've now captured the shape that we want to extrude. So we've finished with the sketch and we can click on the blue check mark or tick to close Sketcher and return to the 3D environment. We're now still looking in 2D so it'd be useful to rotate the model. We do this by moving the mouse cursor and holding the middle mouse button down and then moving the mouse and you can see what's happening. I'll just zoom out a little bit. So what Creolence Pro has done is tried to extrude the rectangle or the square rather and you can see that it's actually done quite a good job. Now we need this to be centered around the sketch plane. Here's the sketch plane and there's an option in the dashboard we can change to make that happen. So if we click on the symmetry box and then we want it to be 30 millimeters long. I can either drag on screen I can change the number here in the dashboard by double click and then press enter after typing a new number or I can double click on the model and change it here. We need 30 millimeters so I've changed the number there and we're now finished. To close down the extrude dashboard I can click on the this time the green check mark in the dashboard and that takes me back to the modeling window. It's useful to return to a known view and up in the list of saved views across the top toolbar we can change how we view the model by choosing let's say trimetric it spins it round until it's facing in the right direction and it actually looks as though it's sitting on a table in front of us.